Welcome back friends. So today we're going to get started on making some jelly prints for this particular artwork. Now what you're looking at here is a canvas that was created for me from my digital file. I created this in Illustrator. So the this body of this woman is all ready for us and all we have to do is collage but I have a specific idea of the kind of papers that I want. So I want papers that are a little grungier and I also want them to have more um, blending in certain areas and a little bit more tone on tone. So um, you'll get the picture as, as you watch. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's get started. So at first I thought I wanted to do small pattern stencils and sort of tone on tone on, on these papers. But you'll see I change my mind a lot um, because things start to happen. And um, you just never know when you're doing jelly, jelly prints for collage papers. It's, it's a different experience because you're not really going for composition or anything. You're just trying to... Um, find the kind of papers that you think you're going to need when you're doing your collage. Now in this case I'm very specific to particular painting and I, and I know what I want it to look like in the end. So I just, I'm, these are the kind of prints that I'm trying to make and I almost want them to look like accidental, you know, like um, the kind of gel prints that you get when you made a mistake. You know, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but sometimes those mistakes are the best papers, especially for a collage. So I, I'm kind of trying to make mistakes, if, if that makes any sense. I want them to just look like nothing, but when they're in the collage, they will be something. So as you'll see, I don't even put the paint all the way on. I don't brayer it too neatly. I'm doing a sloppy job because I'm going for it kind of an effect. I'm mixing different colors. I'm just doing this very intuitively. I'm not, um, I'm not trying too hard. I'm just, I'm just working for a really long time. That's why I'm speeding this up to just to sort of see what happens. A little bit of this is experimental and a little bit of it is that I'm trying to go for some kind of look, but I think the most successful ones are the ones that were um, just kind of accidents, like this one. You know, you just never know when you're mixing um, on the plate what you're gonna get. Now I'm, I'm halfway mixing some of the colors over on my smaller plate on the side, on the right-hand side, and then I'm using some colors right out of the bottle. And so I think it's giving me a pretty nice um, result on the, on the paper. The, on the pole, we end up getting, you know, these nice, um, these nice blends that happen, or sometimes it's even better where it does not blend. Now this has got some nice grunge going on, so I think this is going to be very useful. In part two, when you see me doing the collage, I think you'll kind of get why I was doing it this way. And a lot of these papers, I do not even put a stencil over it, and some of them I did. And I also had some other colors that I had in pots that I pre-mixed. You know, these are not colors you get out of, out of a bottle. So there are some areas that I need darker colors. And so I'm using that alizarin crimson to hopefully give me that, that tone that I need for those areas. Very grungy. Yeah, so some of those areas 
the dark areas are just what I'm going to need. You'll see in this session I also use stamps a little bit and it's mostly because certain areas had too much contrast and I was sort of toning it back a bit. So keep your eye out for that. So I used copy paper throughout this entire session so that all the papers would be the same. But in the end, I wish I had used rice paper. So for this entire series that I'm going to be working on, because this, this is the, the first of a series, um, they're all going to be rice paper. So you're going to be seeing me work with a lot of rice papers in the future. And part of that is because the copy paper, because of the slight thickness of it. I mean, it's just a tiny bit thicker than the rice paper, but it stood out a little bit more on the canvas than I would have liked. It's still great. I just think that that little bit, that, that nicer paper, that rice paper will just make it a quality piece in the end. So some of these will be first layers. They will be backgrounds that I will then stencil on top of. And some of them were so beautiful as they were that I did not put a stencil on them. So you'll see as we keep going. I'll put a list of the paints that I'm using in the description below. Now obviously some of these I am mixing and they are in jars and for instance this sort of uh, cornflower gold in color. Um, that was a mixture. So I, I obviously cannot share that with you, but um, I will put all of the other paints down below. And even some of these, you know, clean off sheets where I'm cleaning off my brayer, I save some of those and I end up using them in the end. But I love how that we have shifting of colors there. So wherever I love the paper as it is, I, I just kept it and did not put anything on top of it. Some of these I brayered all the way to the edge, some of them I did not. And one of the reasons why I mixed some colors was because I was looking for very specific colors that I did not own. Um, the bottle of, so I just mixed it. I was working very fast. I think that my full session was about an hour, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, and I made a lot of papers. Well, I just kept going. I just, I didn't want to stop. I was on a roll. I was in the flow, if you want to call it that. So I got some interesting transitions here. So what I mean by transitions is like the way the brayer uh, blended the colors. So, and I like some of the um, edges too that the brayer made. So I think it's gonna be interesting. So I wanted some like really deep purple sort of blobs, I guess, what I keep calling them, and 
when you know that a heavy body paint mixed with the fluid paint doesn't really mix that well so that was all very intentional and as you see I got some really great blobs and it left me some as a ghost as well so I get quite a few prints that were really nice from here so I decided to pick that up with titanium white So I'm, I'm adding some other pastel colors. Just really subtle. But I definitely need those purple blobs. And look at that, look at that cleanup sheet over on the right. So here what I'm doing is I'm just I'm mixing a whole bunch of colors on the plate but really subtle and blending them all together. And this will be for some highlight areas. And again, the blobs, oh my God. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to some stencils and I'm going to push the paint through this stencil. And I'm just using some titanium white. And I'm going to overlay this pattern on top of one of the backgrounds that I just created so that I get some subtle texture. So as you can see, I'm working so fast that I'm not even showing you what I'm printing on because I'm in the flow and I just want to get it done. So I apologize for that. Um, let's just keep on going. But it's a nice subtle print that I get there. I didn't want the white to be to show up too much. I wanted it to be, like I said, tone on tone. So I'm also going to pick up the ghost. It's super subtle, but it gives me the papers that I'm looking for. So a lot of times I'm looking at the background and then I'm deciding what color would go with this. And because that already has the Titan buff, I decide I wanted a little bit more of that. Now notice I didn't even use a stencil. I'm just trying to pick up more of the paint that was brayered on. I'm also deciding that this this um, brayer sheet, this clean off sheet, I've got to keep that beautiful colors. So now I'm doing more stenciling. And again, that's tight and buff. over the purple sheet. So some of these I ended up putting a third layer on and this is one of them because it ended up not being enough tone on tone. It was it was too too much contrast there. And I'm also picking up the ghost with this other background sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna work with this smaller stencil. I'm putting the Titan Green Pale on the right and Teal on the left. I decide to introduce some to the right hand side that I love the teal and I'm going to go over one of my other 
sheets that all had these same colors. So I'm hoping it's going to be subtle enough. And it's pretty good. Now on this other one, I decide to just leave it alone. So then I am going to pick that up with some tight and buff. So I'm hoping to get a very, very subtle print here, but I don't know, the teal is looking a little too strong for me. So we'll see what happens when we lift this print. And I also pulled out that stamp. Going to be using it soon. Okay, the right-hand side is great. Left-hand side, teal is way too strong. So I'm deciding to put the stamp over that yellow. Very subtle. So I'm going to put the Titan Buff. I'm going to stamp through it. And this gives me some subtle texture. And it plus it toned down that yellow a bit too. It was a little too bright. Now it's more of a buttery color. And I'm picking up just sections of what was left on the plate onto these other sheets. And I love what it does to this. Okay, we need more purple. <laughs> so that sheet that I said was not subtle enough, this is going to be my attempt to quiet it down a little bit in that section. And that works. I'm going to start with some pickup sheets because I think that I might be able to use something in here. Definitely in here. This one I was actually planning while I was working. Definitely love some of the subtleties in here in the blending. So these are probably most of the pickup sheets that I decided to save right here, or the clean-off sheets, I guess we should call them. I found another one. This was, I think, the very first one. Um, definitely going to use something in here. But then, okay, so this was a real subtle that I needed, almost white. I love this little hint of uh, prism, uh, not prism violet deep violet I think it is I've also got a little bit of this very pale green going on and these nice blues so this is all going to be these are going to be cut into triangles and butted up against each other and it's going to be I think it's going to be amazing I like this subtle stuff that's going on in here and in here I can probably use some of this even some of this in the darker areas where I need just a hint of purple. Same thing with here. Look at that little smudge right there. Oh my god. <laughs> I get excited over the craziest things. But I also like all this little subtle texture with the dots and the grid. And now we're moving to our greens. So we have, these are sort of more turquoisey greens, but moving into the tight and pale green pale and I may I don't know about this I'm not thrilled with it right now but when I'm working on the painting something in here might might spark something same thing here it's got a little bit of this yellow peeking through I might even just need a plain piece like this this I'm going to save for something else this is not appropriate for this painting but that is fantastic so I'm going to use it somewhere else this one I didn't put a stencil on top of. I just liked some of the transition colors that were going on, and I think it's going to be perfect. 
I needed some deep blues. So I'm going to get them from here and also possibly from here, not sure. Um, same thing here, I got a lot of subtle, subtle transition blending going on that is really pretty that I might be able to use. This could be used in a white area. Again, this, not that thrilled with it. It's a little too overall textured. This one, I didn't put a stencil on top of it because again, I just loved the brayering that was done and this middle color is a big area that I need. So that's perfect. This is on that. This was my very first print. Not absolutely thrilled, but I'll probably use it in one spot, maybe one or two spots. And this also, I'm going to need it in some yellow highlight areas. These are also, you can see how these colors are all going to be beautiful together. This I'm probably just going to use maybe one or two triangles from here. I need this rich red, but I also have it here, but with more of a texture. I also have the alizarin crimson and the nickel azo gold right here that I'm probably going to use and some of this subtlety also here. Look at all this crazy subtlety going on. I just love it. And here. But I also love this side that I didn't touch. So this is just a little tease of the next video that is coming out soon where I'm working on the collage. And this will just be the background. I have not decided what to do with her dress yet. I may paint something on it or I might collage something on it. I haven't decided. Or I might leave it black. This, that's also an option. If I see it after this background is finished, I may absolutely love it black. So I hope you enjoyed watching me create papers for this specific collage. And I hope you'll join me next time to watch me step by step create this collage. It should be a good one. Anyway, don't forget to create, inspire, and share, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.